do you think that shocking images will captivate people more? Well, the same because, you know, an image is, it is artificial what you do on a canvas and so far, you know, you sort of like try to, you know, grab a whole life or a whole situation maybe on a very, you know, square or rectangular piece. So, of course, it's like theatre, you have to dramatise it, it has to sort of be intensified because otherwise people, you know, for the same money will just look at the wall and say, oh, you know, nice wallpaper. So, you have to draw in a way, you know, condense everything on that canvas so that people are sort of going to look there. Um, we have we have talked a lot about sort of the relationship with theatre in your work. Mm -hmm. What do you think the importance of that is? Well, say, say you know, either I have a single figure and then of course that single figure is sort of mostly looking out towards the viewer or, you know, in a way, <clears throat> if they're not looking out towards the viewer, they are sort of totally enclosed or isolated within their own world. So that's a particular mood, you know, I want to I sort of emphasize. But if I do something with more figures, say either two or three, then the whole, I'd say, tension happens within, or has to happen between those three figures. And I think the tension is that it's sort of just slightly on edge. In, you know, in theatre you can do them with lighting, for instance. You know, which supports, I use quite theatrical lighting sometimes when I paint, sort of like, you know, I like just sort of like a shadow like this over a face or something. You, you, in a way, catch all those figures together in, that square, in the size of the canvas. And they are, in a way, caught in there. They cannot get out of there because that moment you catch them is sort of like, in a way, sort of like extended horizontally forever after. And I think that helps of, of making that tension, you know, of a slight awkwardness because mostly our moments, however awkward they are, they last just, you know, a millisecond or something. And then you can sort of like, if you feel it's awkward, you just step sideways, light a cigarette sits on the radio, look out of the window, you can do something to diffuse it. Which of course with a painting you don't because it's just, you know. Um, and I think you can use that kind of theatrical quality of, in painting. You can use to your advantage. Really. What is the relationship between the lady in the pictures and the king? And I think that if you really, you know, desire, you know, someone that person becomes really much bigger than they are. It's a bit like what children do, you know, they sort of see their parents as the most beautiful, biggest, you know, and encompassing, till of course, you know, they grow out of it and they think their parents are the most stupid, shitty, or whatever, small time people. Your, your pictures have powerfully sexual images as well. Yeah, erotic, I would say more, you know, yeah. but yes, they have, yeah. Do you think um, that sometimes people would deny erotic things in a, in a public arena? I think people sort of, does, yes, I think people sort of think that erotic is sort of like, it has just sort of like a particular kind of place and time, as if it is, you know, that erotic always has to lead just to sexuality or a sexual act. And of course, obviously, it's in there as well. But I think the erotic is something which is risks all the time, 24 hours. Not to sort of like, you know, that unbearable drive she met, but I think it's a total part of our communication. It's not part of our communication. That does not mean that we have to go and jump on each other all the time, I mean, you know. <laughs> but I, I think the erotic is that you sort of, uh, you know, things are sort of like children do. Things are sort of lickable. They, say they have this still sense of uh, essentiality, which is beyond, say, a practical... And I think that a lot of people just don't want to, they're not aware of it or they just want to de deny it and they don't want to go there. They like, because se a sexual thing is controllable, you know, it's quite clear, you know, as a yeah, beginning, middle of ends, you know, it's controllable. You can keep it in hand, but I think erotic, of course, you cannot keep it in hand. Because it's sort of, in a way, it's serious, it sort of weaves itself in and out between people all the time. Do you think it's important for people to sort of, start accepting that sort of thing as part of themselves? Well, I'm not a teacher, you know, I'm not going to educate the world. Be real, there is more, you know, there's all the side worlds going on at the same time and just, just incorporate that, I think it really is important. But I'm, I'm quite sort of amused myself that it is so much, so strong in my work. I think I wasn't aware of it, how, how strong I was amused <laughs> until I started painting about it, you know. <laughs> so, uh... And does it uh, play a big part in way to smoke as well. I think through my etching, it sort of came out 
in the clearest form, and then it has been sort of incorporated in my painting. Because I think in drawing, uh, I was a bit sort of less, you know, more shameless, really, because I draw in the night and sort of like, you know, I didn't really sort of, I was less self-conscious. And I think because of the drawing and the etching, I, I did things which I would never have dared to do or say in daylight. That sort of has filtered through in my sort of painting, which is very much, of course, a daytime kind of activity or light activity. And now, sort of like, you know, I'm not really bothered about the shame of it. Or you know, that is sort of saying, oh, God, you can't do that. Yeah. And yet, I don't, you know, there's nothing pornographic about my work. I, there's nothing that you sort of say, oh, my God, you know, you can't. So I, I think that's quite a distinction. Sorry. Who is the lot? Uh, Lot is um, he. He was a very virtuous man, living with his family in uh, in the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, and you know all kind of bad things were going on there. So the Lord said, "Okay, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah," and the family of Lot was allowed to leave. And so, but the Lord said, "Oh, you, you're not allowed to look back." And of course, Lot's wife, you know, the whole family, her whole life was there. So she was running one time look back, and she turned into a pillar of salt. And then Lot and his daughters, they kept running away from Sodom and Gomorrah. And, um, you know, when by nightfall they find themselves into the desert, of course they, or maybe the second day, they realized, you know, that they had no husbands, no offspring, you know, the end of their tribes. And so they fed their father wine and did what a girl had to do and, and you know, ravished their father so he could impregnate him in continuation of the tribes. And of course, the funny thing is, oh, for, for the life, but very funny. Then, then of the gods, you know, this was pure incest. He didn't sort of say, hey, listen, you know, I'm going to destroy you guys as well. No, you know, totally fine to have sort of. <laughs> so, there you go. Now, I like these stories which are illogical, you know, mm. that first you get destroyed everything because of bad sexual practices, and then the second time it is to save, you know, the tribes of Israel. So, yeah. Um, you also have sort of animal masks, people wearing animal masks. Is that a, uh, the, a person sort of trying to be an animal or imitating an animal? I find the animal is our, in a way, our real energy, but it is sort of, of course, not, you know, civilized in the same way. And I turned the tables in that, say, the animals often have the dresses on, you know, the, the, the dogs have sort of gauzy dresses, the, the apes, which look very, quite ugly looking masculine apes have sort of frilly dresses on and then they are either confronting or fronting um, mostly uh, the woman who is naked actually. They, they have no protection whatsoever but of course the animal and the person is the same thing. They are together, they're, they're a unit. They're not, you know, an animal and a woman. As, so it's a bit like those uh, anatomic dolls, you know, where you can sort of you know, those plastic dolls you can take a part out and you can see the heart and lungs, you can take the lungs out, you know, it's like that. So you can, you know, I've in a way dissected a person on a given moment into, you know, her, the person itself with all the hidden parts, you know, at the same time. Again, I quite like that the whole thing is sort of quite classical, just this sort of like, you know, 70th century, you know, sort of quite black. And the whole thing is just really sort of resolved, or resolved on this kind of part. Um, I like also, it's not really matter how much it is like a self but it's really sort of just standing there, just being there, which I like um, in portraiture. Uh, all your self-portraits look, look very different. Yes, yeah, okay, yes. You mean different in mood or... Um, I think everything about the sort of mood, style, mm. the way but you look. I think there's also, but, but then a bit again, like, you know, that I try things out in self portraits. So there's not so much that I want to sort of really paint myself as, you know, as a sort of like, oh, uh, to express myself. But it's just because I know myself well, and, I, you know, I'm in the midst of my own flesh kind of thing, I can, I don't have to pay too much attention to that. So then I can really do an experiment in a mode or in a sort of like, in a, in a way of painting, you know, because the subject matter is so familiar to me. So it is really, they're very good, like you make these tronies, the Rembrandt did them, you know, you just try out uh, painterly kind of things within a self-portrait.